YouTube, Lizzie B here. Um, today I wanted to do a quick video where I talk about something a little different. Um, I recently went to Sundance Film Festival and I wanted to talk about it. Um, it was a great experience and I um, got a lot of things out of it that I did not expect. So without further ado, um, let me tell you how it all began. Um, last year, I decided that I wanted to, um, I like wanted to go to Sund Sundance Film Festival. I had um, not a lot of money, so I picked up, a, I, I freelance. And so I picked up a project and I used my money from that project to be able to fund the trip. I'm sorry, my throat is dry. <clears throat> so I used that money to be able to fund the trip. I flew out and I heard, okay, so here's the thing with Sundance. Sundance is two weeks. The first week from what I've been told is like the party week. Everybody's partying. Everybody is, you know, kind of just getting into the groove of the whole thing. And just, there's, you know, a bunch of great movies that you're going to see, but people are mostly partying. The second week from what I've been told is a little more chill um, not as many parties, but you know, you're going to see more movies. It's, it's, um, just very, a little bit more movie heavy. The whole thing is movie heavy, but without the parties, you're going to see more movies. So I decided to kind of straddle the, um, you know, the week a little bit because I wanted to attend some of the parties so I can do some networking, but I also wanted to see some movies. So I came and I came off of the weekend of the first week and stayed a little bit into the days, midway into the next week, into the more low key week. And from what I was told, that was pretty perfect in terms of like choosing the days to go because for me, it, um, you know, worked in my favor. So I'm happy that I did that. But I think that was the only thing I did right because, again, this is my first film festival. And so I did a lot of things without not like I had to just really play things by ear and, and just, you know, <laughs> throw spaghetti at the wall. I had no idea what I was doing. So when I first got there, day one, I think, was the hardest day of my trip in um, Utah because I made the silly mistake of getting a hotel room in Salt Lake City. So number one thing to do, number one no-no is to not get, don't get a hotel in Salt Lake City. The base, the hub of everything is usually in Park City. Everything is in Park City. There's free shuttles that drive you around Park City from theater to theater. You know, it's so much easier to get around Park City in Park City um, and cheaper because Salt Lake City is a half an hour away. And, you know, that might not be much to some of you, but in snow, it that doubles the length of time you're going to get there. And then secondly, and usually, I mean, I don't know if it's usually snowing, but when I was there, it was snowing. And um, secondly, Ubers and um, rental cars, and any other way to get there is excessive. Like it's going to be ex super expensive. And then on top of that, if you take a bus, it's going to take forever. And you know, with buses, you're going to have to wake up early in the morning, you know, to get there. So I learned that lesson the hard way <laughs> on my first day. Like I went, I was in Salt Lake City and my hotel was there because I had enough mileage for it to be a free stay. And so I stayed in Salt Lake City and the, the Uber that I tried to get was like 60 bucks. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to do that. Maybe I'll rent a car. I tried renting a car, which was like an even stupider mistake because when you drive up there, you have to park that car. And when you park that car, it's going to be excessive in terms of how much you're going to be paying. So I paid like $40 to park that car. And that was when I decided never to, you know, that I was going to take the, um, <laughs> that I was going to take the uh, rental car, car back. So that's what I had to do. <sighs> what else? So, um, yeah, that was that was tough. And then my phone was dying because it was freezing cold. And it was a lot that happened on the basis of me staying in Salt Lake City that did not have to happen. I spent a lot of money I did not have to spend. So thankfully, um, one of the best things about um, 
one of the best things about Sundance is that you meet a lot of really cool people. And I was lucky enough to have met a group of women who were just, you know, kind of in this, not to say in the same boat as me because they came as a group, but they stayed in Salt Lake City as well. And they'd been Ubering back and forth. And so being that there's like three or four of them, they're splitting an Uber and it's only like 10 bucks. So I, I hooked up with them and it was like, you know, I'm going to take back my rental car. Can I, can I jump, you know, in with you? And they were like, yeah, let's do it. So I jumped in with them every day and we would drive up to Park City in the Uber. And it was such a, you know, much better experience. It was nice to be able to chat with these ladies about the movies that we were seeing and panel discussions that we wanted to go to. Um, you know, if, if I wanted to go to something, sometimes, you know, one of them would be like, Hey, I want to go to that too. And we would just go to something together. A lot of times we went to different things, like different parties. If one of us was invited in, we would try and get the others in. It was just a nice little way to kind of find camaraderie with, you know, just a bunch of women that just had a lot in common. And so that was fun and it really turned my trip around. So one thing that I will say is Don't be shy, network, meet people, you know, smile, like just get out there and really um, don't, you know, this is not a quiet, you know, artsy, let me be in a corner and, you know, stay to myself type of occasion. It's, it's really everywhere I went, I was meeting someone new, bring your business cards or just make sure you have an Instagram or something because sometimes people don't want to be carrying around no business cards. So that, I think that would be my second thing of advice is just to make sure that you are networking and meeting people because you never know somebody may be able to help you or, you know, people might be in the same boat as you. Um, I forgot to mention that when I, when I rented the car, I had to drive back down the mountain and I mean, it was scary in snow, in a strange car. So it was like, it was horrible. I would never recommend to anybody to ever rent a car, if, especially if you're, you're coming from a warm state where you don't have to worry about snow and that kind of thing on the road. You know, I, I like, I'm from the East Coast, so I know all about driving through snow and that kind of thing, but it's been a, a few years. So I was very scared, like in, in that car, driving at night, ice and slush on the road, can't even see the lines. And it was it was a nightmare. It was literally a nightmare. So I was so happy to be able to turn take that car back. And if I had not have been open to meeting new people and making friends, I would not have had the opportunity to find someone to be able to Uber back um, and forth from Salt Lake City to Park City. But... I, I'm going to say it again. If you can bypass staying in Salt Lake City, bypass it. Don't stay there. <laughs> Just stay in Park City, especially if you're alone. If you have a group of women, maybe do what those young ladies did, because that, that was a really smart way to be able to save money and get a, you know, a decently priced hotel and that kind of thing. But Nah, not for me. Um, it was not, it was not a good look. It was a terrible move. Number three, when it came to my trip to Sundance, um, the wait list app, the Sundance app for sure, um, was my best friend. I did not buy tickets in advance. I bought, I bought one ticket in advance, one ticket because they were just sold out so fast. And when I bought that ticket, um, I, that was the only movie I didn't go to was the ticket that I bought in advance. And the reason why is because I, you know, you don't know where you're going to be when you get there. Like there's this party going on and that party going on and this panel discussion, there's so many different things. And I didn't really map it out the way that I should. That's one thing that I'm not the best at. I like to kind of wing situations and, and play it by ear. And I should have stuck with that. Like just commit to that. If you're going to play it by ear, commit to that. Um, and I was trying to do a little bit of both. So I should have made sure that that movie was the only thing going on at that time. And it wasn't, there were other things that I wanted to do. And I ended up doing those other things. I got into this party for a a great investment company. And, um, I was like, I'd rather go to that party and meet people that might be able to invest in my projects as opposed to be sitting in a movie theater, seeing this movie. I don't even know if it's good. 
So I made the right decision, but I should not have bought that ticket in advance. And so I was feeling like, oh man, you know, I'm not seeing movies like I should be. I'm out here, you know, kind of meeting people and, and having a good time, but I wanted to see some movies. And so what I ended up doing was I downloaded the Sundance app. I downloaded this app before I flew out, but I downloaded the app and I was able to put myself on a wait list for several movies. And let me tell you, that wait list came through, especially in the second week, because a lot of people came home, went home after that first week of partying and networking. Many people went home. And so I was able to get in the movie after movie after movie after movie on my second week there because I downloaded the waitlist app and you got to be really fast. Like you have to, you know, it's like as soon as the waitlist opens, you're hitting a button. You'll understand what I mean if you go to Sundance and if you download the app and if you do all of that next year, you'll see what I'm talking about. But people told me about this before and I experienced it for the first time with this trip. And let me tell you, it, it really came in handy. Um, during the first week or not the first week, but when I first got there um, on the weekend, of the first week, I um, used the wait list once and I was so worried because I, my finger was like literally poised and ready, three, two, one, hit, you know? And I still didn't get in the movie. I still was too late. And I was like, oh my God, if the wait list is, is, is this bad, then I'm never gonna get into a movie. But I promise you, it dies down. By the second week, you'll get into everything that you wait list for. Um, if your fingers are fast enough and even if they're not because a lot of people have gone home so you have a better chance so I was able to see quite a few movies that I really wanted to see except for one there was one movie that I really wanted to see that I missed it um, and so yeah I'll probably see it when it gets picked up whatever but um, yeah download the apps I guess that's some advice number three and um, let me see what else. Um, oh, shoes. <laughs> so I went out there thinking that I was going just, I don't know what I was thinking really, but I brought the wrong shoes. I'll put it like that. Um, I was looking for like these mud snow type of boots and I couldn't find any of course out in California. And so I, um, I was like, well, I do have some boots. So let me just wear those and I did, but let me tell you, you need waterproof boots. And so when I got there, I was walking around, oh God, I'm so embarrassed to even say this. I was walking around in these suede boots with a little bit of heel to them, slipping and sliding and, and my feet were bricks. I mean, suede, like the snow and ice that came through those shoes just ate them up. And so I'm walking around my toes are just practically like icicles and I was having a miserable time. And let me tell you something. If you ever want to have the worst time ever, wear the wrong shoes to something. <laughs> you will just be so miserable. Like I was miserable. And I mean, the food didn't taste as good. Conversation wasn't good. I was just angry at the world. And so I found a store that was selling shoes. And, you know, I mean, at, at that point, I didn't even care how much they cost. I was like, just give me those shoes and just whatever. I put, as soon as I put those shoes on, my entire trip changed around. My entire trip. I mean, I think that's when I met the young lady, I, after I put those shoes on, it was like a magical experience. That's how much better they were than the shoes that I wore. That's how much it changed my experience at Sundance. The, sh the shoes are everything. If there's nothing that you take away from this video, please do not ignore my advice about the shoes. Get some mud boots. Um, they will save your life. And oh God, that, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking, but after I got the shoes, that's when I met the young ladies. That's when I, you know, was getting into parties. Like it was great. Like I, I had a great time. And so, um, yeah, get you some shoes um, before you go out there, preferably. But if you, um, you know, if you can just save up two hundred dollars for shoes alone, you know, if you if you had to buy them out there, do that as well. But um, don't wait to the last minute to buy them while you're out there. Don't think you can survive with whatever flimsy shoes you may have. Get like some, you know, some strong insulated waterproof shoes. So yeah, that's advice number four is get the right shoes. And what 
else. It's it's expensive. Maybe my fifth thing will say will be how much money you should save. Um, at least, at least, at least a thousand. At least, at least, at the very least, a thousand dollars. Um, I spent a little over eight hundred dollars for this trip. Um, maybe it's because I went alone. You know, maybe if you split the trip with someone else, it'll be a little cheaper. Maybe. I don't know. But I, I honestly, I think um, I like to always have a little bit more money than than not enough. You know, not enough. nobody wants to not have enough. But, you know, I spent a little bit um, over eight hundred dollars for this trip. Um, and that includes every single thing um, that I did. And I used a lot of air, airline miles and that kind of thing for stuff like the hotel room. And so I saved money. So um, in hindsight, I would, I would tell anybody and everybody a, at least $1,000 for this trip, just in case. Because um, you never know, number one. And like I said, I don't like being out of state. I don't like being anywhere where, you know, some, like I couldn't imagine what it would have been like if I could not afford those shoes. You know, like my trip would have been horrible without those shoes because I'm telling you, like it really, really changed the quality of life of my trip. Like I probably wouldn't have been able to go to any of the parties. I probably wouldn't have been able to travel back and forth like I had to. Like it would have been a, it would have been a lot because there was a lot of snow, a lot of ice on the sidewalks. It was just it was freezing cold. It was like 20 degrees the entire time. So, you know, there was a lot of things that unexpectedly came up that I needed to pay for. So um, I'm just saying at least $1,000. That's my fifth thing to know about going to Sundance. And um, that's it. Like have fun. Like I had I had an awesome time. I met a lot of really great people. Hopefully people I can collaborate on future projects with. Um, I cannot express enough how valuable of an experience this was for me. And I made a lot of good friends. I made a lot of um, friends with people who, you know, I can't wait to visit because a lot of them live out of state. So if I go, you know, to D.C. or to San Francisco or to, you know, wherever, Virginia, I, I have friends out there now and we're all connected, you know, via Instagram and, and Facebook and whatnot. So I'm excited about that. Um, but you don't have to go to make friends. Oh, I forgot to talk about the movies. The movies were amazing. They're inspiring it, for any filmmakers out there. If you're, um, you know, interested in, you know, connecting with the filmmakers of these films, like they're very accessible and you get to meet and mingle with these people. You're going to parties with them. Um, so that was really cool. But it's not even just a filmmaker's type of thing. There were so many people who went out there who um, were just, people who love film, who, who just, you know, I met a few architects out there. I met, um, you know, a lot of lawyers, just people who are just like, I like, you know, film festivals and that's why I'm here. This is the biggest one that, you know, that I like to go to. And so, I mean, like it was just so many great minds just coming together. Just a lot of really cool people, a lot of weirdos too, but you know, what are you going to do? But yeah, the movies were, um, were really fun and interesting. I saw a great documentary on Studio 54, which was, was my favorite documentary. Um, but I'd only seen two <laughs> and, um, this great movie called Tyrell, which I thought was cool. Um, movie called Sorry to Bother You with, um, Lakeith Stanfield and Tessa Thompson. I thought that movie was awesome. And, um, this great movie called White Rabbit that I really, really liked. And, uh, yeah, I mean, like I, I can go on and on about the movies, but you know, that's it. This was my experience with Sundance. I loved it. It was great. I would recommend anybody to go, but have some money. <laughs> like don't, this is not a thing for poor people to do. Like it, you're going to spend some money. They're going, they're gouging prices out up in Utah. So, um, just be, be aware of that. Um, like I said, I saved an entire, um, check you know, some uh, from a project that I worked on and that's what helped me to get out there. I just put that money aside, but, um, that's it really. So thanks for watching and thanks for letting me talk about my experience, uh, going to Sundance. Um, if you've gone, let me know about your experience and, um, that's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day and that's it. Bye. Bye.